I wish I could bring energy right now. <laughs> I was so excited about we're talking about college football. I have a lot of dear Tennessee fans, um, and I'm just so excited for them this weekend. And then it's very easy to hate the University of Florida. I don't care where right. Gatorade was created. I hope, I hope it works out, man. But like I say, I'm 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 not I'm not counting my chickens before they hatch. I'm I'm fully prepared for disappointment to rain. So. But I will bottle the excitement because unfortunately, for the next twenty minutes, <laughs> we got to talk about how bad things are. Oh, oh, I'm excited. in Indianapolis. I I am I'm ecstatic to talk about it. Let let let's talk. Oh, about all it. right. Yeah, Welcome to another edition of Chaos yeah. and Conversation Absolutely. with your boy. Mike Loft and ML, and of course, the mouth from the South, Paul Feinbaum. I mean, Sean whoa, Coleman. Whoa, whoa. If, if, if you're going to compare <laughs> me, if you're going to compare me to any type of Pauls, and when it comes to their ability to speak, I'm Paul Heyman, and you're welcome. So, Paul Heyman, not Paul, who saw no, no, who no, no, the no, sir, and no, sir, no, sir, no, 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 Paul Feinbaum. But Paul Feinbaum you is your fellow Tennessee Vol, though. Alone. That's that's perfectly fine. I'll go Paul Henry. <laughs> well, you know what? I had to bring some laughter because things are fucking awful right now. Um, yes. Yes, they are. And, yeah, I'm using the F word because you know what? You would think you would circle games on the calendar if you were Francis Reich. And he's not Frank. You can't be Frank anymore until the Colts get a win or look like an NFL team. But I think I would circle on the calendar, especially after Mr. Ballard and Mr. Ursay decided that they were going to be done with Carson Wentz. And they said the backbreaker for them, the straw uh, that broke the camel's back, was losing at Jacksonville to prevent you from when you went into the week, you went into Oakland, or excuse me, you had the game at Oakland at home, a 93% chance to go to the playoffs. That was still in the 80% chance to go to the playoffs, going into the game, the season finale at Jacksonville. And all of a sudden, Pittsburgh goes out and beats Baltimore. Then they're out of the playoffs, and because of tiebreakers, then you're out of the playoffs, and we're in the next season. New quarterback, same running back. A little bit of different offensive line. New yes, you're missing Darius new Leonard. Quarterback, same story though. Same story, absolutely indeed. And you know what? The Colts were embarrassed two times in a row in Jacksonville. They keep losing in Jacksonville. I have no idea why I ever thought the Colts would get their acts together. Uh, crazy me. I'm not sure I've seen a more embarrassing 60 minutes of football in my life since living in Indianapolis. I, I, when I joined the podcast today, I had everything ready to go. I was in my butler gear, uh, went to the women's soccer game. We lost to the school in Southwest Ohio uh, tonight, unfortunately. Then I saw my man, Sean Coleman, wearing his, wearing his Tennessee Titans hat backwards. And I said, all right, might as well join in the melancholy is, you know, misery loves, uh, misery loves company. And I had to put on my Indianapolis Colts uh, polo and, oh. Oh, Man, you oh, laughed at it. You yeah, laughed yeah, at it. Yeah, I, I, and I'm not in misery. I, 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 I oh, okay. I, 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 Jackson, I, I want, I want it to be understood. I'm not in misery. I did have hope before the season started. I was a big believer in our defense, and I thought that if we could get that win against the New York Giants, that put us in a pretty good spot. And I want to make it clear: there's no defining favorite in the AFC South right now. So the Colts or Titans could emerge from this and still be the division champion. I still think that if if the Colts or Titans sweep the two games that we have in each other's first seven games of the season, that team somehow figures out to win the division. That That's just me personally. So that still is definitely on the table. But if that doesn't happen and the Titans keep losing – I'm excited about a rebuild. Let's embrace it. Let's go with it. Let's let's do it. So you're out on Tanny. You're out on your boy oh, Tannehill. No, 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 no. I want it to be understood. Let's let's make something very clear here. Okay. I've had a few people who have pointed out that Tannehill is an average 
quarterback. I've never I, disputed I, that was the case. Sure. I sure. have always said that Ryan Tannehill, in his first two years with the Titans, yes, sir. was a clearly above average producer. And others who have said, well, you could put any average quarterback in that situation being supported by Derrick Henry, and you'd get the same results. No, you wouldn't. My point is, though, is that, yes, we're starting to see that if this team is having to rely on Tannehill to elevate the talent of his receivers, that's not the quarterback that he is. He never was that in Miami. But Tannehill's not been our problem so far this year. Tannehill's, you know, played – just fine. Our problem is we don't have a lot of good consistent play calling and we played the Buffalo Bills. That's what our problem is. Now, last year, Tannehill did mess up the best chance that we had of getting something special out of the Derrick Henry era. I'm not saying it's over. I am saying that I'm confident that the best chances of us doing something really special in his era has passed. But the point that I'm getting at is is that I'm actually kind of a bit of excited because, hey, we beat the Raiders and then we put together a few wins and we beat the Colts, you know, over the next, you know, few weeks. Hey, we're right there in the driver's seat for the division. But if we're not, that means that we are completely sucking and, and hey, we get some good high draft picks and a good draft. So I, I'm fine with whatever potential outcome there is. <sighs> fine. <laughs> You think Vrabel is saved if you guys do not make the oh, – Vrabel's guys not going anywhere. Vrabel's, Vrabel's fine. Vrabel's okay, Vrabel's I agree. Okay, I agree. Uh, okay. okay, I agree Vrabel with that as well. Is Vrabel, Mike Vrabel is a coach who has the talent. He is a talented enough coach to win a Super Bowl. Yeah, I, well, yes. When you traded away A.J. Brown, mm-hmm. you took the blanket off, that or one of the blankets off that covered you, you're coming into yes. a season where where Derrick Henry's not it, it was likely going to be the case Derrick Henry's best days are behind him yeah yeah and you no longer had a go-to offensive weapon so you took some blankets off that were going to expose your fatal flaws Mike Vrabel's fatal flaws is he is too loyal to ineffective difference makers when it comes to coaches mm-hmm. the Titans were their best when they had Dean Pease and Arthur Smith they don't have those, you know, they don't have those minds anymore. Mm-hmm. Rabel is at his best relating to players and as a CEO. He's not there in making game calls or anything like that. The Titans need to get rid of Todd Downing, give the reins to Tim Kelly, see what he can do in an audition for a year. Shane Bowen, see what he possibly could do because the defense has struggled so far. I'm getting too deep into this for the Titans. We've got plenty of other things to discuss. My point yes. is, Rabel, I'm putting it to you like this. John Robinson and Mike Vrabel have done enough to see through another iteration of a Titans core to see if that core can do better than what we did over the the three years previous to this. I think they deserve that shot. So, no, if if the Titans go 2-15 and this year, no, I don't think that Robinson or Vrabel are going anywhere, and I don't think that they should. But my Mm -hmm. point is, is that what they should do it's clearly learned that they need to change some things for them to get to where they want to go. On the other Frank end, Reich is in trouble. Frank Reich is in trouble. Yeah. Because he doesn't have the cachet that Mike Vrabel has in terms of playoffs wins. And you know what? The, the franchise has not been the same since the Buffalo at the Buffalo Bills game uh, in the playoffs. Rivers did enough to win that game. Frank Reich's calls in terms of inside the five, two times in a row, first of all, not giving it to Jonathan Taylor, and then two, not if you're going to if you're gonna go for it, at least have your best player in the, in the game, even for a decoy. If not, you're going to give him the ball. I'm so frustrated because I think they have enough to do well. And the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I know it's early, yes, It's only been two games, but Jesus F. The Jacksonville Jaguars are first place in AFC South. Really? Who's their coach? Yeah, a Super Bowl winning court or Super Bowl winning coach, sure. And a guy who develops quarterbacks pretty good. 
And so that's what comes into play for me is that God, he knows how to run a program. Chris yeah. Ballard, I don't think he's on the hot seat as of yet. Maybe though. But I do think I do think that the, that conversation needs to start. I think Chris Ballard has done an outstanding job putting a team together in 21 of the 22 positions that you got to put them together on the field. But the one that he has not is quarterback. Going from Rivers to Wentz to Matt Ryan. Obvious things that you need to do. But in that time frame, you had the chance to go after a Russell Wilson and others. So my point is, is that I get why he does what he does. And I don't think that Ballard, I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, with Robinson, I don't. I think the Colts still have a, a, at least a year or two where they're a relevant, you know, potential playoff team. I think they're more, I think they're the most talented team in the division. Okay. But I don't, I, and I don't think Ballard's on the hot seat. But after this year, then yes, I do think he's on the hot seat. But I'm going to be honest with you right now. And, and 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 I'll say this, and then we'll go on from there. Yep. If the Titans lose to the Raiders, I want them to tank. That is absolutely the truth. Trade Tannehill, explore Derrick Henry's trade market, trade Danico Autry, look and see what you can get. Uh, who was the other? Uh, Robert Woods. You're probably not going to get much, but if you do at least see what you can get, then you take those talents off. That means you're going to suck even more. That means you get a high pick. Now, don't get me wrong. They're not going to trade Derrick Henry. They're, they're not going to go all in on Malik Willis this year. They're just not going to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do want the Titans to suck if they lose to the Raiders. Because at that point, you're 0-3. Yes. You're just hurting yourself for the future if you try to go to the division because you ain't going to do anything in the playoffs. You had your measuring stick last week. You found out you're light years away from being in the conversation of the Chiefs or the Bills or what have you. You just don't have enough talent for Brable to make a difference like he did over the past few years. So my point is, is that if you lose to the Raiders, tank. Just tank. You you okay. already went all in on a bunch of rookies this year to play significant roles. Why not do it next year when you have the chance to get more talented rookies? And then you can start to build a core for the future. With that being said, I think it's one of the biggest games of the of the weekend because I think the Raiders are, they may not know what they are. They could be incredibly reeling uh, from. Oh, I think the Raiders are salivating. Seeing what Josh Allen. Really, Sean? Absolutely. Did you see what Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs did against the Titans defense? I'm not saying Derek Carr's on the level of, of Josh Allen, though our defensive coordinator obviously thinks that, but yeah. I'm not too thrilled about seeing what uh, Derek Carr and uh, Devontae Adams can do against the Titans this week. But they totally, Josh McDaniels, they totally shit the bed Okay, on Sunday. Okay. 20 to, uh, and granted, okay. Kyler Murray was special, special on yeah. Sunday. Okay. Uh, and not a traditional quarterback playing, but, you know, enough, right? Do you see um, Tannehill doing that? No, I don't. Okay. No, I don't. The way that the Titans win the game is if they are able to get a couple of turnovers and Derrick Henry has a has a field day. That's Which, the way that they win this game. These are this is what they do though. Derrick Henry gets going. You know, How long so hey, not as much of a guarantee as it wants to be. And I don't mean to talk so bad about I love Derrick Henry. But, I, right. I, I'm just being realistic. I, I, again, I think that I think that Derrick Carr and Devontae Adams are salivating after seeing what Diggs and Allen did for our defense last week. Okay. Well, let's move on. I'm tired of talking about the Titans. Who's going to win? Who wins this weekend? Titans this see. There you go. All right. Yeah, That's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Colts I, I, will be 0-2-1. 0-2-1. Wow. They will lose to the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. I think we agree with that. Yeah. At home. Home opener. They're not beating the Chiefs. They're not beating Patrick Mahomes. It's That's not that big of a deal because I think the Titans, what they played the Chiefs in week five, I think. I think they turned Sure. Over. So then it, like, gets it back. Sure. Yeah. You and I, we these are our guys. Mike well, McDaniel is it, our over. Oh, you kick the Colts' ass. Oh, they, they will. Kick their ass. 100%. Quick, quick uh, calls there. We got Dolphins, Bills. Bills are favored by five and a half going into Hard Rock Stadium. 
kind of still like the Bills there a yeah. lot, actually. Yeah, I, I think Bills, the Bills are good. Their business. Oh, oh, five dude. and a half. It's so much fun. If you want to talk about one of the more must see offenses in the NFL, it absolutely is the, is the Dolphins. So um, this is this is going to be a, a fun matchup. And I'll tell you this: I, I will mm-hmm. tell you this right now. I I'm not ready to put the Dolphins up as a top three team in the AFC. What no. I am willing right. to say is, is that this could be one of your more popular dark horse AFC championship matchups. Okay. Yeah. And the re and, okay. and, and, not and, against and, it. And and I and I think the reason why that is, and I say dark horse because very little chance that it happens. Um, but Mike McDaniel's not going to be scared in these yeah. games. Though Shanahan was the head coach. Over the Super Bowl run and over last year's NFC title run, McDaniel had plenty of voice. He had plenty of experience in that. So I don't think that there's there's too big of a stage for him. So I'm not saying yeah, it's going to happen. I just think, it's gonna I think it becomes a popular dark horse. Yeah, I think McDermott's going to confuse two a bunch. That's a good um, point. However, I do. the Dolphins have great weapons, but they can't run the ball as well as and that's going to be a problem for them. And last time I checked, the Bills' secondary is a little bit better than Baltimore Ravens' secondary right now. I, I like the Bills. I, I actually think they win comfortably. Let me throw out a, a interesting game for you here. Um, and the Matt Rule is like potentially go home game. The Panthers are they are two and a half point underdogs against the Saints at home. Is this the beginning of the end? Or the Matt Rule, yeah, yeah, campaign. Matt Rule, yeah, Matt Rule needs to be looking at real estate in Nebraska. Yeah, and I think I think, I so think too. it's smart for him. I, I think Matt Rule is the type of coach that could absolutely get Nebraska back on the map in college football. But he's a college football coach. I like the hire. Um, for uh, I like Matt Rule. I like yeah. the hire. I mm-hmm. like how he put that defense together. I'm a, I'm a big believer in their defensive talent. Um, but yeah, his the and, and it maybe the GM. <laughs> But their whole approach about going the cheap route with with the quarterbacks, and you know, I, I I'm all for you trying to take a chance. It's just not there. So I, I think Matt Roll his his best, uh, especially if they lose on Sunday, his best route is to absolutely be looking for real estate in Nebraska. Yeah, yeah, and that's okay. That, yeah. And that's okay. And you you tried it. it you know, it was like Spurrier, right? You, yeah. you try it, you get a feel, and then if you're not successful, that's okay. That's no. all right. No. So, okay. Yeah. Yep, that's where we're at. I think that if the Panthers, if Rule winds up not being there, I think the Panthers are one of those teams where if they find the right coach, there's one of those scenarios where they're a good quarterback or a value-adding coach away from being a surprise team. I think they have offensive weapons that still have a few years in McCaffrey and, you know, I think a you know good few years left in D.J. Moore. They've got some things to work with with that young defense and some offensive weapons. You're just mm-hmm. going to have to have a difference maker as a head coach or quarterback, and they have neither right now. Agreed on that. Rams, Cardinals, Rams, minus three and a half at State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. Both teams ended the games with wins, but how they got there, very, very different. Yeah, and, and I think the Rams – uh the depth of their offensive weapons are going to make the difference in this game. I mean, when you stack up Henderson and Akers, you know, one of them potentially take over as being the go-to guy. But you've got depth at running back for um, the Rams. you got Stafford, who, you know, seems to be okay to fight some, you know, off-season arm concern. But Cooper Cup and, 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 and Higby and um, Robinson, I, I and I think the Rams' defense is going to be smart enough to figure out how to not let Kyler do what he did against against the Raiders. The depth and just the overall consistency of the Rams is significantly higher than the Raiders. So I, I'm going to go Rams in this one. Convincing. I like them too. I think it's a tale of, uh, once again, a tale of two tales in my opinion. The Rams are not as bad as they were in opening night against the mm-hmm. Bills. Correct. Right? They are not also as good as they were in that first half against the Falcons. Uh, and when they just went on a, a crazy run and then they may have just, you know, kept the foot off the gas a little bit and Falcons crept back into the game. 
And so maybe this is where they find the consistency and they kind of have to because division, this division is brutal, especially with the return of Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, and we'll t- let's wait a week until he actually has to start a full game. And then we'll, we'll talk about him in a little bit. Uh, let's wait to talk about him next week. But yeah, I think we agree on the Rams there. I think the two, two fun games on the board here, Packers and Bucks. Actually, the line is now to even. The Bucks were favored by one and a half. And now the, it's been bet all the way down to even. Uh, and it's Packers at Tampa Bay, interestingly enough. That surprised me that it got bet down to even. That's because the Bucks are just missing so many weapons. Um, I think I think the Packers actually get this one done, Do the weirdly run enough, on the road. Do the and run that's run. because Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon keep the ball away from, from Tampa because I think Tampa's uh, – their strength is pass rushing. And if they can get going, run the ball, I think the Cowboys had to abandon it because Dak was not himself. But they got they started out okay with Zeke running the ball. And I think the Packers, uh, if they get back to Yari back, they'll be okay. Absolutely. Yeah, Tampa, it, it, how Tampa defends Green Bay's rushing attack is the difference in that game. And Rodgers kind of needs one, right? Yeah, you know what? Man, I think they're going to upset him. I could absolutely be wrong, absolutely be wrong. I could see Tom Brady maybe scoring – 30 points, and I don't know if the Packers can get the 30 uh, right now just because he's not humming quite yet. But I'm, I'm going to go with the Packers. Okay, nice to see that you and I are taking a road dog there. You, you, uh, so. You're saying you think that Tampa could potentially score 30 points? I, I don't see that at all. I just think they not right have now. weapons. If, if God <laughs> wins, what if Rodgers just says F it and throws a pick, couple pick well, sixes? No, so, I mean, if that's the case, that's fine. But, I mean, that's, that, that, that's Rodgers – Doing it for them, basically. Fair enough. But but and I'm not trying to be difficult with you. I just like I just don't see no, people being able to score thirty. But yeah, no Mike Evans, no Godwin, most likely. Um, I just saw that they signed Cole Beasley. Uh, yeah, but I mean, slot undersized Caucasian receiver. Co- 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 Feels Cole like Beasley, a Tom Brady guy. Cole Beasley is not Antonio Brown walking through that door. So so, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. no question about it. All right. Let's go, go, Pat, go. And I think this is one of the fun ones just because Russell Wilson is, I think, is an 80% winning percentage over the 49ers. He is a 49er killer. Uh, however, Russell Wilson is not our typical version of Russell Wilson that we are used to seeing. Um, but despite that, Jimmy Garoppolo's got to go to Denver, uh, Mile High Stadium, uh, and we will have Mike Tirico and Chris Collinsworth on the call. San Francisco is actually favored by one and a half. Give me the Broncos, road dogs. Let's go. Yeah, no, I'll t- I'll take the Broncos. I picked them in our pick'em um, opportunity. I picked them outright. Okay, I-, I do. I think in this game, the Niners are going to have to rely on Garoppolo quite yes. a bit because who's going to run the ball? That's right, Elijah Mitchell. That's right. Out. Um, uh, That's right. You know, I think Jeff Wilson is, is going to be your your main back, and I think Wilson is is fine for who he is. But he's not the type of guy who's going to be able to, I That's right. feel, make the most of this. You're going to have to have Garoppolo have one of his better games. And I think that Denver also is going to be a bit motivated. After the two lackluster performances they've had to start yeah. the year, I think that they're going to be looking to get some things up, probably try to get Cortland Sutton going more, get Javante Williams going more. Because Denver has some very good offensive weapons to you know around Russell Wilson, and I know that the Niners' defense is extremely, extremely talented, uh, but I think that that Denver wins in this one outright. I do too, man. I'm agreeing with you a lot on bets, and we know, know your why. record in bets I, right I can, now. I can talk a good game, but I suck. <laughs> I <laughs> maybe this is the game. bounce back week. Maybe so. this is a bounce back week. Uh, Sean, uh, yes, once again, misery loves comp- misery loves company. Unfortunately. Uh, for our teams here, go horse, tighten up. Maybe they'll be better, <laughs> or maybe not. And then we're just fighting hey, through both hey, for C.J. It, Stroud. If it's not better by this time next week, I hope it only continues to get worse. So let's, let's, <laughs> let's, 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 let's look at it. So, On that front, enjoy the weekend, everybody. Uh, Sean, leave the folks drink of choice Saturday. Uh, I, I, think, I think if the uh, – the balls went on Saturday. I think that we're 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 going to go with some gentleman Jack and uh, maybe throw oh, in man. a little bit Dr Pepper Zero in there. I don't know, but we 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 may get a little bit crazy and crafty on Saturday at the balls win. Man, at the balls win, whoo! 
It's going to be fun. You're going to be able to hear me all the way up there in Indiana slash Michigan, Michael. Oh, love that. Uh, we're rooting for you, bud. We're excited for you this weekend. And I'm thinking seltzer, tequila or pizarro, shots. Yeah, and that, that, that you know, I got to have a vodka Red Bull before, that, 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 uh, before game day. Way, way too exotic. I hope the Colts lose by 40. Go Titans. Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> See you, everybody. See you, baby. Thank you.